In this season after Pentecost, um, we are focusing on the gifts of the Spirit. And uh, we've invited different people to um, reflect deeply on those different gifts. Last week, Don Murray talked about the gift of piety. Our invitation to you this morning, as Vanessa talks about fortitude, is to see, try and think deeply about what she's saying, but also to see if you can recognize that in the world at large, in our own community of Christ Church, and that particular gift at work in your own lives. Thank you. And one, please remember to give Vanessa your feedback at the end of the service. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. These words and the words of my sp sermon are spoken here in Mi'kmaq, the ancestral non-ceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. This land is covered by the treaties of peace and friendship which the Mi'kmaq, Maliseet, and Passamaquoddy peoples first signed with the British Crown in 1726. I acknowledge this to reaffirm our commitment and responsibility to improving relationships between nations and to improve our own understanding of local Indigenous peoples and their cultures. Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ, here at Christ Church and online, and welcome to this place. To put us in the frame of mind for today's sermon, I would like to start with Psalm 46, verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. I was asked today to speak of one of the gifts of the Spirit, the gift of fortitude. Well, what is fortitude? Like many, the first thing that comes to my mind when I heard the word fortitude was, of course, strength. But what does strength have to do with God? So in delving a little deeper, I find in this case we're speaking to our spiritual strength. Well, I'm not sure about you, but this didn't really clear things up for me. So I needed to dig a little deeper. So I found this explanation. Fortitude is the ability to commit to God despite temptations or external pressures to the contrary. Fortitude is also the ability to endure suffering and hardship in the name of following God's commandments. Okay, so now we're all clear about the frame uh, for the theme for today's sermon. Let us look at the lectionary readings. Upon first reading, I had a very difficult time connecting to that theme. Our Old Testament reading is certainly not an easy read. Equally, our psalm is a bit doom and gloom, not very helpful in informing our lesson on fortitude. But as always, I'm up for the challenge, so here we go. How many of you remember the time before we had Sunday shopping in Nova Scotia? <laughs> for reference, for you young folk, uh, Sunday shopping was uh, allowed as of October 2006. So what did we do with our Sundays before shopping? We rested. We spent time with family and friends. Some of us learned to drive in the big empty parking lots. And of course, we went to church. In Israel, during the time of Amos, they also had a weekly stoppage of work, the Sabbath, a day that was meant to be spent acknowledging the Creator as a source of sustenance for all living things. However, there begins to be a little pushback on this notion by the people. They wanted to get rid of this day as it impeded their ability to make money, which in turn sort of further disenfranchises the poor. The people of Israel begin seeing the Sabbath as simply a requirement to act out, but not something of meaning to enhance their own personal growth. Is this what has happened here? Have we lost the meaning of Sundays as an opportunity to build community, to celebrate together that which has been given to us by God? Have we lost our fortitude as a society? Are we in a place now like the people of Israel where injustice prevails? 
In many ways, we live in a society which perpetuates this injustice through policies and systems which pit wealthy against poor, able against disabled, powerful against powerless. We see injustice around us daily, and though we here at Christ Church are working to make change through our food and clothing ministries, our partnership with the Elizabeth Fry Society, and the community fridge, are we also feeding the spiritual needs of our community? Perhaps it is time to stop and hear the word of God. Perhaps we should be doing more to safeguard the time to stop, listen, and to reflect, and to make peace with God. We need time each day, or at least each week, to simply be still and know that I am God. The opportunity to hear God's word is what allows us the opportunity to learn how we are to act out on his word. Without hearing the word, we lose the gift of fortitude. Our reading from Paul's letter to the Colossians has two parts to it. The first part of the reading extolled the virtues of God, where the second asks whether the Colossians will hold on to faith. In the first part uh, of this letter it is an interesting choice of images and words used to represent Jesus as the head of the body of Christ and of the church. This is a radical illustration of Jesus in Paul's time as it goes against the prevailing belief that the Holy Roman Emperor, Caesar, is the head of the church and the ruler of the people. Paul's words are meant to remind and to present to us that God is the ultimate ruler whom we should commit ourselves to wholly and with reservation. Do we not also need this reminder now? In a time and society where the church has become less and less important and secular rulers and pursuits have become of higher importance, the need to hold firm to faith, to find our fortitude, has become increasingly difficult. Many are faced with limitations and restrictions on the expression of faith. Though we remain lucky here in Nova Scotia, there are other parts of Canada in which the secular rulers have placed explicit and firm restrictions on the ability to freely express faith outside of church buildings. Even without these restrictions here, how many of us have felt hampered by similar restrictions? How many of us are able to or willing to freely express our faith outside the walls of our church? How many of us have stopped to appreciate or even acknowledge our fortitude? I know that I have frequently struggled with this. There doesn't seem to be many opportunities or allowances to freely express my faith. However, I do know that I live through my faith. I know that the way that I treat others is because of my faith, the care, time, patience, and dignity that I afford to those with whom I work is because of my belief that we are all equal and we are all deserving of love, and this is deeply rooted in my faith. You may have noticed that I opened my welcome with a line from Paul's letters of my brothers and sisters in Christ. I chose this intentionally. If we are all brothers and sisters in Christ, it means all. All people, regardless of family, race, ethnicity, class, nationality, and sexuality. Regardless of where we are, we are always in Christ. The second half of the reading brings us to a place of reconciliation. We, who have turned away from God, who have sinned, are reconciled by the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. But to bring about this reconciliation, we must start the process here in this lifetime. We must persist in our faith with conviction and strength, with fortitude. This takes us to our gospel reading, a short reading, huge message. In this reading, we have two women, Martha and Mary. Both of these women are important in this story and both of these women teach us about the two kinds of ministries. So where are all my moms? <laughs> ACW or Alter Guild women? Most of us have been a Martha at some point in our life. How so? Think about a big event in which you were or were part of the hosting party. A holiday dinner, church spaghetti supper, 
seniors high tea. So now think, where are you? What are you doing? How many of you pictured yourself busily in the kitchen working and doing all the preparations for the food or rushing around busily making sure everybody has something that they need? I know I did. I pictured myself at the side of the kitchen door of the church hall loading and unloading the dishwasher. And at home, doing all the cooking. Sometimes while I'm in these roles, I feel like I may be missing out on the other things going on. Perhaps I will miss an important moment with my girls. Maybe I'll miss a conversation I should have had with a friend or colleague. It is more than a fear of missing out. It is the sense that there is another important thing happening. This is where we find Martha today, carrying out the ministry of service. However, Martha is struggling to keep up with the hosting duties, ensuring everyone present is cared for and has what they need. But at the same time, she senses there's something more which is taking place and that she should also be there. This is where we often find ourselves, in the ministry of service. But does this ministry of service come at the expense of being able to stop and hear the word of God, to just be still and know that I am God? This is the essence of the rebuke from Jesus to Martha. Martha, overwhelmed by the many distractions of hosting duties, is unable to simply be present in the moment. It's not unusual for someone in the Martha role to find it difficult to transition from ministry of service to the ministry of the word. It requires that we move from the role of the provider to the person receiving a gift, leaving us often feeling vulnerable and a little bit out of control. Mary, on the other hand, is on a different journey. She is a participant in the ministry of the word. She is present for and to the hearing of the word from Jesus. She is in the moment. She is seated at the feet of Jesus in the position of a disciple. She is embodying the act of be still and know that I am God. This doesn't seem like a big deal, but in the context of the time, it is a radical position. We have Mary not partaking in the hosting duties and helping Martha as she should as a woman but she's also welcomed at the feet of Jesus, breaking cultural norms and expectations. This is something for which Jesus is well known, breaking cultural norms and expectations and turning society upon its head. The importance of the ministry of the word is to hear the primary message of God, to love thy neighbor. As the body of Christ, the church, is tasked with both spreading this message and living out this message. The positioning of Mary as a breaker of cultural norms further shows us that the church should also be positioned in the same way, as a rule breaker, set free from cultural restraints and assumptions. We must be the voice in the world to fight such things as slavery, racism, sexism, homophobia, and poverty. The gift of fortitude is a many-layered gift. It asks us to trust, to listen, and to act. As both individuals and as a church, we must consider how we must use this gift. Do we trust that God will provide? Do we listen to the word? And do we act on the message we receive? In closing, I wanted to end with this prayer. God, who made me in your image, teach me to love myself as you love me. God, who made me in your image, allow me to show that image to the world. God, who made me in your image, help me to see your image in all those I meet. God, who made me in your image, teach me to conserve and protect all your creation. God, who made me in your image, bless, protect, and keep me and all your children safe. And may the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind toward each other, toward each other that Christ Jesus had. Amen. Amen. Amen.